All right, let me adjust that. Good afternoon, my name is Miss Felt. If you've joined me before on here, you've seen some of my live videos. I've been doing lots of products with you from your house using supplies that you hopefully have in your home. This will be our last art project for the school year. We're doing something really fun today. We're going to be making some 3D puffy paint ice cream cone art. Um, and I will pan you down and have a seat and show you the supplies before we start. Most of the things that I am using today you can find in your house. Um, if you don't have those things, it's not a big deal. This is why I record these and I post them onto my YouTube channel so that you can access them at your convenience. So I'm going to pan you down and we're going to go over the supply list for our project today. Okay, so take this here. Sorry about the noise. Ah! Can't get it. <laughs> All right. All right. That's probably enough adjusting. It's probably making a lot of aggravating noise. So, stop. Okay. All right. So, for our project today, for our very last one, you are going to need the following. And I've got some things here that I don't need. Like, you don't need an iPhone. That's just sitting there. I really don't think you need scissors today, so we're going to get rid of that. And I don't think that we need our acrylic paint. Those are from previous projects. What you do need today, you're going to need a piece of cardstock or sturdy kind of paper. I have just a piece of thick cardstock. The back of a crayon box, or I mean a um, cereal box would work well. You need just a basic pack of crayons. Um, liquid glue, preferably Elmer's. I'm going to try it today with this Mod Podge since I couldn't find my Elmer's, but I think that should be fine. So just like liquid white glue. You need some shaving cream. I just have this Barbasol shaving cream. You can get the um, kind of the Dollar Tree I use a lot in my classroom. You're going to need some food coloring. I have some different colors, a spoon or two, and some all-purpose flour. I just have like a few scoops in here. I also have some bowls. I know I didn't really, I don't think I put that on the supply list, but no big deal. Just go grab your bowls now. Um... When you come back, we'll get started. I may have an extra one. I'm not sure. So, measurements. I know that there's, like, measurements on some of these blogs, but basically, we're just kind of looking for a certain consistency. Almost like uh, Model Magic. We kind of want it to be sort of, like, stretchy. And we don't want it to... We're going to mix the shaving cream, the Mod Podge, and the flour together. We just don't want any of it... We don't want it to feel like a flower, we don't want it to feel exactly like glue and we don't want it to feel exactly like shaving cream. We want to feel like kind of a, a mixture of all of those things. So we're just gonna kind of do our measurements in stages. We're just gonna experiment, kind of like with cooking, a little bit of this, a little bit of that till we find the right consistency. So I am going to just take some flour, scoop it on in there. Hmm. Take another spoonful of flour and maybe a third spoonful of flour. Not super, not a ton of flour. Then I'm going to take my, let's do the shaving cream. I'm just going to give it a good little dash of shaving cream. Maybe like one even layer over top. There we go. Give it some real height. See, there you go. And then for my glue, I'm just going to pour a little glue on top before I mix it all together. So, my Mod Podge is a little bit thicker than a lot of liquid glue. So I don't think we need a ton of glue. That one's going to be the one I'm going to put the least in for now. But we'll see how that works. I might need to add some more. So now I'm very gently going to try and use my spoon to combine these things. Oh, Lord. I'm getting some flour on my table. Oh, my goodness. I'm really getting flour on the table. Maybe I should have used... A bigger bowl. If you're watching at home, you need to pause this, rewind. Or pause this, go get a bigger bowl, and then come back. All right. <laughs> so, at this point, it feels really bouncy. But it feels mostly like shaving cream. I think there's a lot of shaving cream in here. I don't think I've gotten all of my flour combined. And I really, I think we might actually need a little more glue. It doesn't, it's kind of got like a whipped cream sort of consistency. 
Might be close, actually. I do remember when we've done this in class before that we had to kind of play a little bit with the, um, the ratios. So let me just add just a little more glue. Whoop. Mix that around. Kind of almost like a model magic consistency. That's looking better. Something kind of like uh, cake frosting, too, would be like a good one, which I'm starting to get, actually. It's actually looking pretty good. Remember, if you don't have any supplies and you just want to watch Miss Felt make a mess, you're more than welcome to just enjoy the video and watch me make some cool ice cream. I love going online and watching other artists create artwork. It's very inspiring just to watch people turn, you know, ordinary things into beautiful art. So I totally get it. If you'd like to just sit and watch. All right. So I'm pretty happy with that. That looks like it's going to be enough for my two colors. I'm going to be doing um, strawberry and mint, both with chocolate chips in them for my ice cream today. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm just going to let this sit and take this and put it in my flour container over there that I didn't use. I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to use, do my ice cream cone right now. So for my ice cream cone. Oh, and I'm supposed to have a Q-tip, but I don't have one here. So I'm probably just going to use the back of a paintbrush. I'm going to grab a brown um, crayon. And I'm going to take up about half of my page making an ice cream cone, which I've just got a triangle that I'm drawing upside down. And then I'm going to just do some cross hatching on it, just make kind of like a grid. So I'm doing diagonal lines this way, which you can't see because the image is being blown up by the light. And then I'm going to go the opposite way. And I'm pressing pretty hard. I'm probably going to trace over these brown lines with maybe like a darker color, like maybe a purple or something. Now I'm going to use this brown and I'm going to very light pressure color. I'm coloring quickly because this is not the most exciting part of this project. The most exciting part is the uh, shaving cream. Right. The important thing is that I try not to leave a whole bunch of evidence of brush strokes all over my project. Sorry. I like coloring so I have my head gets closer and closer to the paper. All right. So I'm going to do and I'm doing purple just as like kind of a cool shadowy accent just to give my cone a little bit more depth and interest. All right. I like that. Very simple. And now the star of the show is going to be our shaving cream puffy paint. So all I'm going to do is put that aside, take some bowls. I'm actually going to split this concoction that I just made into two bowls because I'm going to turn them into two different colors. And I might even save one tiny little smidgen in another bowl to make some like chocolate chips. All right. So mixture number one. I'm going to create some mint colored ice cream. Just take it. I'm going to very, I'm just going to do like one drop to start because I want it to be pastel green. So one drop and I'm going to slowly combine it and I'm going to see how light it continues to be. Oh my goodness. It's so light. It's so light. In fact, that I probably have to add another drop. It's not bad though. Boy, I tell you, putting the flour in there really changes the consistency of this. One more drop. Boop. There we go. Okay. You know, I'm probably just going to use the back of a paintbrush for this other bowl over here that I'm going to mix my pink with. So either you have a whole bunch of spoons with you or you're going to end up using your Q-tips 
and your paintbrush. All right. I like that green. We're going to keep it. For my pink, I'm just going to very delicately add a drop of red. The red, if I remember correctly, is pretty potent, which means that it's a really strong color and it mixes. Um, it'll turn red really easily if I put too much food coloring in there. So I'm not going to put too much. I'm just going to put enough to where it sort of gives me like a strawberry ice cream color, which it looks like it did. That looks good. You can see I don't have a whole lot of this. That's a good color right there. I don't have a whole lot of these, but it's not going to take me a whole lot to cover my paper. And it's going to dry nice and textured. Okay. So I'm going to leave that over there. Now, I'm just going to give myself a little guide with a crayon of where I want to put these two scoops. I guess I can just like this. We're going to do one green scoop. And on top, oh, that was so light you couldn't even see it. One green scoop and one kind of pink scoop. Man, I should have left enough space to do like a cherry on top or something. Okay. Now, let's see if I can just glob this onto my paper. Oh, my Lord. Now I'm going to put it on and then I'm going to start kind of like smooshing it in, trying to get it filled into the circle where I put it. Oh, it's so good. It's like the texture of real ice cream. This is so cool. Adding flour really changes the texture. When we did this in my um, school with, I think, Art Club two years ago, maybe two, maybe three, um, we did not add flour. We just had glue and shaving cream, and it was really fun. But it didn't have this like really cool texture. This really looks like a scoop of ice cream up close. Okay, so there's my green, and you can see it really looks like ice cream. That is so cool. All right, I'm actually going to use my paintbrush that I just used to mix this pink. I'm going to use that to glob the pink on top of where my green is. All right. I kind of smush that around. Now, I want to make sure that I don't blend the green and the pink together too much because red and green and therefore pink and green are complementary colors, which I love to talk about. Um, complementary colors next to each other will make each other look really bright, but if you blend them together too much, then they kind of make each other look sort of muddy. Okay, and unless you want chocolate ice cream, you don't want your ice cream to be the color of mud. But if you do want muddy ice cream, you could probably use brown paint. I, if I recall correctly, uh-oh, scoop that up. If I recall correctly, um, paint did not mix into an ice cream consistency as well as uh, the liquid watercolors. So now I have my pink on there. That is so cool. I'm so excited. I love this. All right, so before I do my little details all around, I'm going to do some like little sparkles and sprinkles and swirlies around it to end it, but to kind of decorate the page. Before I do that, I wanted to do chocolate chips. So to, chew, to do chocolate chips, I'm going to grab one more little paintbrush. And let's see. Maybe a small paintbrush. This guy. I'm going to do... How about we do... Blue, and I did two drops of blue, and red, and I'm going to do a little, one little drop of yellow. So blue, red, and yellow, if you don't recall, are the primary colors. The primary colors, when they are mixed together, they make gray. But if you mix with the portions of them, then they'll make different versions of gray. Like sometimes they'll make a brownie kind of gray, and sometimes they'll make like a really green kind of gray, and sometimes they'll make a warmer gray. I'm looking for 
Oh, look at this. This is very green. Y'all can see that. I need this to be darker. This paste is very green. So since it's so green, I'm actually going to add a little bit more blue and a little bit more red. And I'm not going to add any more yellow. Add a couple more, a couple extra drops of red. Okay. You can see now that it's starting to darken some, and it's starting to look more like the color of a chocolate chip, like a milk chocolate chip. Ooh, this actually starting to look like chocolate ice cream. All right. We're gonna go one more time to darken it up. One, two, and. And you can see that I add a little at a time. One, two, three. I'm adding a little at a time so that I don't over add. Whoops. Got some red food dying on me. There we go. All right. That looks cool. All right. So that actually looks like chocolate or toffee soft serve. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wipe a lot of this off the tip of my brush and then I'm just going to take and dip it in very delicately and just place it onto my, oh my goodness, these look like real chocolate chips. So cool. Oh. Now I'm just, I'm twisting and turning and being very, very gentle when I place them on there. I don't want it to be like a giant glob of chocolate chip. But I also don't want it to be so teeny tiny that it just looks like a smudge of dirt. I want it to look like a chocolate chip. Look how cool that is. You know what? Strawberries, they can have, this can be like a chocolate strawberry scoop, right? They have those, don't they? They have a flavor that has chocolate and strawberries together. I certainly like chocolate and strawberries. My favorite ice cream is something, I like peanut butter and chocolate. That's like to die for, in my opinion. That's my favorite. So anything that has chocolate and peanut butter mixed together, I'm a fan of. Obviously Reese's Cups, peanut butter cups are like my favorite snack. That's why I actually don't buy them because I'm nervous of being with them because I will eat the whole thing all at once. Okay. I love that. Okay, so as you can see, I've now got my chocolate chips on my ice cream cone. So the last step that we're going to do is I'm just going to decorate around this just to kind of make this page look a little happier. If you're using a cereal box, you can probably color on that with some crayons. If you're using um, like a paper that's not white, you can still color with the crayons. If you didn't want to color with the crayons, you could just wait till this dries and kind of cut it out a contour shape around your ice cream but we are going to do some decorations. So first of all, I'm going to pick out a couple colors and I'm going to make a pattern with those colors. I'm actually going to use, let's see, I want this to be cow. So I'm going to do pink. I'm going to do these like really fun kind of cartoony stripes and this like darker pink together. Oh my goodness. You know what? I'm going to skip spots. So that's going to take me way too long. On the other side, I'm actually going to go this way. And for any little ones who may be watching this in the future, what is a pattern? Oh, no, I got some mint ice cream on me. Very good. I heard your answer <laughs> through the TV, like many children's shows. Pattern is something that repeats itself. We practice patterns a lot at Joe Davies in our class. All right. So, got my happy ice cream. Oh, I didn't look so good. And now I'm going to create kind of like a fun little border around my page. Now that I've had all this pink and I've got this kind of color scheme going. I'm going to choose a light, happy blue to go as my border. So for my border, let's see. 
I don't want to go all the way to the edge of the page. I'm just going to kind of go near it. And I want it to be a little thicker. And I want it to go behind my exploding happy lines. I don't know what you would call those. Animation lines. Kind of look like the ice cream is dancing. Okay, let's see. I'm going to let him overlap and go under the ice cream cone a little because that will make him look like he is. Oh, no, he didn't need to go in. But it would make it look like the ice cream's kind of popping off the page. I actually have a little secret I'm going to do right before we leave with that. I'd like to add a little shadow under the cone to make it look like it's really popping off the page. Because some of the pieces of this art are popping off the page. Your 3D ice cream's popping off the page. All right. So this part down here now looks all sad and lonely. So I'm going to take a light color because I don't want to distract from all of the awesomeness happening here. Let's see. Let's take this yellow and this yellow orange and we're just going to do some happy little swirls. So I'll do a couple of yellows. And I don't want them to be too big or too small. I might even overlap a couple up here. Then I'm going to take some oranges. I don't want those to be too big or too small. And I'm just filling in some of the bigger white areas because before we put these in here, oh, you can't even see in that well. I'll hold it up when I'm done. Before we put these in here, this paper in the back, it looked really like sad and lonely. And now you can see that it looks nice and happy and bright. Now I'm going to teach you real quick how to make a shadow before I go. Because we're just about done. Nice quick little project. And you have to let this dry for a while. I wouldn't touch it right after. I'd probably just leave it overnight. And then I wouldn't fool with it a bunch. Because even though it's going to develop kind of like a film over it, it sort of locks it onto the paper. It'll dry pretty well. But I don't think that it's great with like you putting your hands all over it. So I wouldn't say, oh, it's dry now. I can sit here and like rub it against the wall. No, it'll probably come off if you do that. All right. So very last thing. Whoops. Before I wrap this little guy up. I'm going to create a shadow on this side where I have this big purple line just to kind of make my cone and everything look a little more 3D. So I'm going to get a color that I think will work that I can color really lightly. I'm actually going to use a combination of this blue that I just did the border with and this gray color. So I'm going to start by coloring pretty dark right against the cone. And as I move away from the cone, I'm very, very quickly going to make my um, pressure on the crayon much, much lighter. Okay? And you can start to see the, the shadow forming. You could call this an optical illusion because you're making it look like this ice cream cone is sitting more off the paper than it actually is. And if you're very careful pretty much it. See it? If you're very careful, you could go around the shape of your green and your pink. Don't get rid of that blue. I'm going to show you where, how we can use it. And I guess you could have tried to do this shadow before you put the 3D ice cream stuff down, but it would have been kind of difficult because it's hard for you to control with your Q-tip or your spoon or your paintbrush, whatever you use. It's kind of hard for you to control the edges and it's actually a good thing that we couldn't control the edges really well because that really does look like ice cream that was just scooped up and tossed onto this cone. It looks very realistic. Got a very realistic texture. Okay. So I'm just going all the way up at the top, trying really hard not to hit the ice cream with my crayon. But if I do here and there, it's not a big deal. Just blow it off. There. See that little shadow right there? That looks some cool. Now, the blue. The blue is going to be for a deeper shadow. So in the areas where the shadow should be the darkest, like right where these two scoops meet each other, I'm going to add some blue to make it look like the shadow is darker in there. See how that just happened? You could even go on that on top of that with like a darker blue. 
I don't want to add too much blue and I don't want to cover all the gray with my blue. Just want to use the blue as another element to add depth. Just makes it a little bit darker in the very darkest spots. And I could actually go back with that purple that I used at the beginning. If you want to know if your shadow is taking shape, you need to step away from it a little bit. So I'm like here, like kind of on top of my paper while I'm working. But when I want to check, I kind of hold it away from me so that I can look at it a little further away. I have the benefit of over, right over here. I can see my um, camera so I can see my video and I can see on the video what's happening and where my shadow is lacking, where I need to add some more gray or whatever. You don't want to add too much gray though at one time because you can't subtract shadow once you've got it on there. Like I can't erase the crown. So I'm just going pretty delicately. Adding shadows and highlights and stuff, that's like one of my favorite things to do in art. It's something that I've always enjoyed and something that I do pretty well. Probably because I have a lot of practice. And a lot of you ask me how I do that. And it, like I said, it's practice. When you look at enough objects, you start to understand where the light falls on them. All right, that looks pretty good. I like that. So last step that I'm going to take before we are finished with this beautiful piece of work. I, and I know not everybody has this because I didn't tell you to have this with you, but I have some white paint right here. And I'm going to just take a little paintbrush and I'm very, very quickly going to add the tiniest of highlights to my um, cone. Just taking a dot of white paint right here and I'm just like that. Basically, just to give him a little bitty bit of shine. Now, oh man, I wish that I didn't have. Wow, that actually looks like an ice cream. That is pretty stinking cool. All right, let me see if maybe I turn this light off if you guys can see that better. Yes, you can. All right, so there's my ice cream. It really is like the texture of ice cream. I'm very tempted to touch it. I know you guys can't see the um, chocolate chips super well, but they're like shaped like real chocolate chips, which is super cool. I'm going to let this dry for 24 hours before I let Maggie hold it or before I fool with it at all. And the paper is pretty, pretty heavy and it's probably going to stay pretty heavy. Okay. So if you are watching this video, I'm sorry. I didn't warn you that you needed more bowls to mix in. So just go grab those. Or hopefully at this point you've already gotten your bowls. Uh, be careful with the food dye because clearly it can leak on you. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you were just watching, know that I'm very proud of my artwork. And then I'm excited to show this to Maggie, my daughter, because she'll get a kick out of it. She actually might try to eat some, which, you know, all the ingredients we used. Oh, no, I probably wouldn't need the shaving cream, although it's probably non-toxic. All right. Just don't eat it. I hope you guys enjoyed this ice cream cone making lesson. I hope that you have a wonderful summer. This is going to be the last live video I, video I will be doing for the school year but I'll probably be doing some recorded videos here and there throughout the summer. So make sure that you're checking back um, and I'll probably share those videos when they become available. But this is not the end of me making art videos. This is just the end of me doing these live videos on Wednesday. Thank you for joining me. Um, there are quite a few of you who uh, did these projects pretty much every week and would send me your, your projects when you were done and I could see them. They're beautiful. I'm so happy with all of you who have participated in keeping your art muscles strong. If at any point in the summer you feel like you want to make some art, just go check out my videos, pick one out of the stack and you can definitely participate. You can send them the, your pictures to me when you're finished. I'd love to see your finished products. Uh, email the parents could Facebook me. I think that you can message me through Google docs, like on clever, if you would like to, and just know that I'm very proud of you. I miss you. And I hope you guys have a wonderful summer. Definitely make sure that you are enjoying yourself and stretching your art muscles until I can see you again. And for my graduates, 
I will definitely miss you. And I hope that you have a wonderful time in sixth grade and beyond. You're going to do great, okay? This felt very, very proud of you. All right. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful summer.